saddle again. Alright, we got the M's up now. Oh, only got 23 minutes left on this and I'm intending to get through O. Then we'll move from O to P and yeah. Anyway, let's start off with M. Machete. Machete. A great over-the-top ridiculous action movie that doesn't take itself seriously. Gotta love it. Uh, in the vein of all those, you know, ridiculously, ridiculous low-budget action horror movies and whatnot. Um, great. If you haven't seen it, you definitely should. Brilliant. I believe I got it for four bucks on Black Friday 2013. Anyway. Major League. I can't remember how I got this one, but yes. Love Major League, as I mentioned uh, with in my DVD overview. I got, uh, I, I gave away, or did a DVD trade-in event on uh, from Best Buy with uh, my original copy of Major League on DVD. And I got this one, Major League Blu-ray. Love this movie. Great movie. Although I watched it a few too many times this year. <laughs> Because we're trying to do something and it just never ended up working out. Anyway, the Maltese Falcon, another one I got from my good friend uh, Byron. And um, yeah, I love this movie. I first saw it in a film class and fell in love with it. Uh, one of the great noir movies of the 40s, uh, one of the first ones actually, I believe it was 1941. And uh, really cool movie. Really good. Next up we have uh, Mastery Commander. I believe this is the original release. I don't know if there's anything extra or special on the uh, Digibook, but the Digibook looks so nice that I've been thinking about getting it anyways, replacing this. But uh, yeah, this does come with a lot of special features and everything. I don't know if there's any difference between the transfers on the uh, Digibook version and this version, but uh, the transfer is alright on this one. It's not fantastic, but it's okay. Um, and yeah, I really like this movie. A lot of people don't like it. A lot of people find it boring. I find it entertaining. So, yeah. Next up is the only Matrix movie I really cared for, and that is The Matrix! How many times have you heard people say that? Uh, yes, the original Matrix movie is great. I believe I sold or traded my original Matrix movie to one of my friends. Uh, I had it on... I had the Digibook, and I didn't really care for the Digibook because it wasn't the greatest digibook, honestly. It looked nice, but it wasn't the greatest. And they had this one on sale on Black Friday for like four bucks or something like that. And I said, eh, why not? Yeah, good price for the one movie I want in the set. Of course, they also put the, uh, the set with the other two movies on it on sale quite frequently as well. So, I mean, I'd probably pick up that one eventually too. Uh, just to have it for the sake of it. Just so I can go back and watch those ones if I ever feel the need to, even though I don't really like it that much. Like them that much. But yes, uh, gotta have the at least the original Matrix in there. You gotta. You just gotta. Next up is Maverick. Uh, one of the westerns that kind of introduced me to westerns, because growing up in the late 80s, early 90s, there really weren't that many westerns out there, especially none aimed that at or that children were given to watch children could watch you know St at that time it was beginning to be stranger danger it was beginning to be oh we can't let our kids watch this stuff it could mentally derange them or whatever and which was awkward because we were also latchkey kids which meant that we were getting you know to see all these movies on like tbs and tnt and all that and all these uh channels that were coming out and having movies showing all times of the day and you know, parents didn't care if they weren't there. <laughs> so we were watching all these uh, PG-13 and R-rated movies, and there was really nothing they could do about it. And um, Yeah, Maverick was one actually we received in the mail from Columbia House. And um, I, I didn't know anything about it, but we watched it, and then I watched it a few more times on VHS, and I really liked it. 
Uh, and I really didn't know any, at the time, I didn't know much of anything about the Western genre. But now knowing more about it today, I enjoy it even more. It's just, it's funny. It's a nice, fun romp. Next up is one I got intending to watch it. I got it uh, 2013 Black Friday for four bucks. Never got around to actually watching it, though. And that would be Mean Streets, Harvey Keitel, Robert De Niro, uh, and Martin Scorsese movie that is called a, mar a modern American screen classic. So, yeah, I definitely need to get around to checking this one out. I just haven't done so yet. Next up, we have a movie that I saw in uh, one of my classes again. Uh, and this one is from the Criterion Collection. We've got Medium Cool, Haskell Wexler. Uh, what's really cool about this movie is that it, at least part of it takes place during an actual uh, riot that took place. So they actually took a camera into an actual riot that was happening and then shot a fictional account of something happening during that riot. Which, you know, you don't see that very frequently. So that's pretty impressive. That's pretty uh, unique and creative and if you haven't seen this movie yet it says a lot about our modern times as well as times back then so it's definitely worth checking out i believe there's a story behind the actual uh the making of this movie and the selling of this movie and uh, uh i think it was mgm had it maybe it was another company but yeah uh they paid for it i believe they paid like three hundred thousand for it and they got the movie, but it wasn't the movie they wanted, and so they, like, refused to sell it, and they refused to show it anywhere, and uh, it's been so hard to find it anywhere on, uh, for the longest time it was so hard to find it on VHS or DVD or anything like that, so when Criterion picked it up, I was over the moon ecstatic, because I was like, holy crap, out of this is the movie that I remember from uh, my film class, that I remember really getting to me and being like, one of those movies that I, you know, really enjoyed and made me think twice about what a movie could be. So yeah, you should definitely check out Medium Cool, very cool movie. It's about a cool medium. Next up for this Black Friday, I picked up uh, Black Friday 2014, Men of Honor for $4. Like this movie, a lot of people don't like it, I guess, but uh, I like it. Um, I don't know. It's fun, it's interesting, it's entertaining. Uh, maybe a little pedantic, but whatever. Next up, we've got The Complete Metropolis, which I picked up for 10 bucks on sale years ago. Uh, I guess it's a great transfer. It is the uh, Kino Complete Metropolis release, and it is it does come in this nifty little box here. Uh, a lot of special features as, as well, and uh, just a great, great version of the movie. Gotta love it. If you haven't seen Metropolis yet, it's just one of those that, as a film buff, you have to see. So, yeah, you owe it to yourself. It's probably the uh, oldest movie I have in my collection right now, although I would like that to change eventually. This one in a PlayStation 3 box, which means I definitely need to get something better for it, but yes. Milk. I got this uh, for $4, I believe, at a Best Buy uh, sale event. Or not Best Buy, Blockbuster sale event. It was a year or two before they went out of business. And, uh, yeah, I saw this for a decent price, and I remember, remembered really liking it. So I said, heck yeah, I'll pick it up. And I believe it is, mm, it is the original version. So, yeah. I just need to get like a proper Blu-ray case for it still, not the PS3 box version. Next up we have Misery, starring uh, Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates is a creepy motherfucker. I'm sorry, she is. She's really creepy. Um, and this movie is just really disturbing, a really disturbing horror movie. And I know a lot of people don't think it's very scary, but I think it's pretty creepy and just like a slow burn of a ooh, creepiness. Um, but yeah, I really like this movie. It's a good one to watch during the Halloween season, in my opinion. Moon! How could I not have Moon in my collection? I actually got to see this in theaters at the local theater that shows a whole bunch of, uh, a bunch of, uh, 
you know, independent movies. Moon is the movie that put, uh, uh, what's his name? Duncan Jones. Put Duncan Jones on the map. And he's gone on from making Moon to making, uh, what's the other one that he did? I can't remember. But he made another movie and now he's making the Warcraft movie. And they're talking about maybe him doing like a Star Wars movie or a Star Trek movie. And it's like, this guy has officially been put on the map. And I tell you what, Duncan Jones... If you didn't already know, is the son? I know. I know this isn't supposed to be the big deal, and he doesn't want it to be a big deal. But he is the son of David Bowie, and he was actually on. If I remember correctly, he was actually on set with David Bowie when he did uh, was it Labyrinth, or was it the other one? But yeah, so he he watched his dad make all these you know sci-fi movies and stuff like that, and he became obsessed with sci-fi movies, and so he likes doing that and with movies for that matter so he likes doing movies likes making movies and was able to get into the film industry by making this movie which was absolutely fantastic and uh yeah great call back i might add to a lot of classic sci-fi from the 60s and 70s and 80s so um uh, yeah you definitely owe it to yourself to see this if you haven't yet next up we have moonstruck one of my favorite Okay, maybe it's a little cheesy, but it's one of my favorite uh, romantic comedies out there. Yes, it's got Cher and Nicolas Cage. But, you know, this is just a really memorable uh, romantic comedy. It's the kind of romantic comedy that I like to watch. It's very much like uh, Sleepless in Seattle and stuff like that. Uh, very well done, very well written, very well acted. Uh, believe it or not. you might. I mean, Nicolas Cage is like... He's perfect for the character he plays in this, I'll put it that way. And there are just a lot of themes that run throughout this movie that are just fantastic, and I love them. So, yeah, had to pick it up. Next up we have Muppets in Space. A lot of people did not like this one, and I did. It was, for the longest time, one of the few Muppet movies that actually had a really good transfer on Blu-ray. Uh, this one in Muppets Take Manhattan from Sony were the only Muppet releases that had like decent quality transfers until Disney came around and started releasing Muppet movies on Blu-ray and they had some pretty good transfers there too so yeah until then we had this and uh, Muppets Take Manhattan which is right here so yeah these are my last two M movies in my M collection um, I like this because it kind of like it takes the idea that was that they started with in uh, the first original movie and it runs with it and then uh, I like this because it's like the first instance of Muppet Babies and it's just a great freaking movie a lot of people don't like Muppets Take Manhattan I like both of these movies they're some of my favorite Muppet movies so yeah I don't know what to say it is what it is. It means what it means. <clears throat> Anyways, that's my M section for you. I'm going to go on to N and O. And that one is probably going to be shorter because I only have 10 minutes left on my uh, memory card on my camera. I'm going to run through those. So, yeah, sorry, but it is what it is. See you then. Peace.